Hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we'll look at the numeric data types, um, the range of values that they can handle, as well as the storage sizes they occupy in our programs. Um, this will guide us in selecting the appropriate numeric data types in our Java applications that we'll be dealing with numbers. The numeric data types in Java are six, or among the six, which are the byte, short, integer, and long, are for storing or handling integers. And we are referring to numbers which can be either positive, negative, or zero, but they do not have decimals. The remaining two types, which are the float and double, are for handling or storing floating point numbers. And these are non-integer fractional numbers. Um, they can also be positive, negative, or zero values, and they should have decimals. For example, as we can see, numbers such as these are floating point numbers. These six numeric data types we have in Java, they have different features depending on the range of values or numbers that they can store and the storage size that is allocated. For example, if I'm developing a Java application that is supposed to manipulate integers, then I would be looking at the four numeric data types or integers, which are the byte, short, int, and long. Now, if my application is supposed to store values which are within the range of negative 128 and positive 127, then it will be preferable I use the byte if, on the other hand, I'm looking at values that are ranging from negative 2 to the power 63 to positive 2 to the power 63 minus 1, then I would be using the long. If I'm using the floating point values, then I would either pick the float or the double. These value ranges and storage sizes are just to guide us in choosing the appropriate numeric data type if our programs are to process numbers. Let's try out some few practicals on the numeric data types in Java. For our practicals, I will first of all create a new Java class file and I would give it a name, numeric data types. When it loads, I will add my main method using the shortcut the tab key. So we want to play with the numeric data types and their value ranges. Um, assuming we want to design a Java application that will compute the ages of dogs that are still alive, we know that dogs cannot live more than 100 years. So it will be advisable we use the byte instead of the integer or the short. Um, so in that case, we would say byte dog h is equals to and whatever h we want to give to our dog. So assuming our dog can live up to 20 years, then this becomes the age of our dog. If we try to assign a value which is more than the range of a byte, assuming 127, this is the maximum positive value we can which is acceptable. If we change that to 128, we get an error. This is an overflow and it is not acceptable. If we want to store values which are more than positive 128, it means we cannot use the byte to store that. So for example, if we change the byte to short, the error goes and it is acceptable because 128 is within the value range that the short can go. However, if we use the short for the age of our dog, it means we are allocating a larger storage space which we would never be able to fully utilize in our application. So let me change this back to the byte and reduce the age to 4. Assuming we are designing a Java application which will compute or store the ages of living human beings, we know that humans may be able to live more than the 127, which is the maximum for the byte. So we can use the short 
which has a longer range or the int or the long. However, of these three, it will be preferable we use the short since it has a smaller range compared to the int and the long. So we would say short human h is equals to assuming a human being lives up to 150 years. If we had used the integer int human h is equals to 150, this means that we would be allocating more storage space to the variable human h, the second human h, compared to the short variable human h. If, however, humans can live more than 32,768 um, years, then it means the shot will not be capable of dealing with our age that we have here. So it will be ideal we change this to the integer. So there is an overflow or an error, but if we change the shot to an integer, then it will be acceptable. If we also change it to the long, it will be acceptable. If we are dealing with the floating points, then we can also declare our floating point numeric type. Um, numeric double is equals to 3.6, and this will be accepted. We can also declare a floating point variable, say float. Um, float when we add a decimal, it gives us an error, and that is because in Java, this decimal is assumed to be a double. So if we want Java to recognize 3.0 or 3.6 as a float, we need to specify that this is a floating point number and not a double. So we can add f to it, say this 3.6, cast it as a floating point number. If we don't want to do that, we can simply say float um, float to is equals to, then we cast it. We will learn about casting later, then we can put the 3.6, and this will be acceptable. So we can simply print out our variables we have declared. So let's say we want to print out the dot h. I will copy this list. And we want to print out the human h. And the last one is the floating point. So we can run our application and we get our values printed out. The next thing we'll look at is the arithmetic operators in Java we can use on the numeric data type and arithmetic expressions.